When there's a marriage and one of the partners has infidelity and they admit it, only 31% of those marriages survive. So it's amazing, it's so costly, it's so final. And yet, why is it? Why do people do that? Why are people willing to risk? We all have needs. I believe we're wired by God to have legitimate, we have physical needs for air, for sleep, for water, but we also have legitimate God-given emotional needs for love, for affirmation, for worth, for security, and God wired us to seek those, to have those met. And when we get married, I think a lot of us say, okay, this is the person that's going to give me love, affirmation, appreciation, they're going to help me feel worthwhile. And when that doesn't happen, or it can't happen, if we're a year or two years or four years or seven years into the marriage, we begin to find that our spouse can't do that, can't meet those needs for us, then we're faced with a decision. When we don't get our needs met, we kind of throw a little temper tantrum and we say, well, I don't care. I'm going to get my needs met even if I have to be unfaithful to this marriage. And that's, I think, how we get there. Why do men cheat? The, the answer is typically the same every time. It's sex. They want sex. Either uh, the sex with their spouse is not exciting anymore, uh, their spouse is not into it, not into the things they're into. There's something unsatisfying sexually. Typically, the, the thing women will express in why they, they gave in to infidelity is they were seeking someone to be a companion. They, they wanted someone to be a life partner. They wanted someone to care about them, to be interested in them, to pay attention to them for who they were. So for women, the affairs seem to be more about finding someone to connect and experience deep emotions with. You need to commit to, to spending time together, to being uh, connected and doing, doing uh, hobbies together, uh, prioritizing the relationship, making the three o'clock phone call to your spouse just to find out what's going on. As couples, you need to have a couple of other couples that are willing, uh, what I like to say is to say the other 10%. A lot of times we'll be with people, with friends or family, and we'll tell them 90% of what we want, what we think they need to hear, but we're afraid to tell the last 10% because we're afraid it's offensive. If you want to have your marriage survive, if you want to help your friends' marriages, survive. You've got to be willing to say that last 10% because that may be the 10% that helps them make a change. I'm for counseling. I love counseling. Counseling saved my marriage. Counseling is helping my children become more healthy than I am. So I think counseling should always be a part of it. And what I encourage people to do is on their anniversary, do something on or around their anniversary that has to do with growing as a couple, where it's a, whether it's a marriage retreat or you read a book together, do something, invest, invest, invest over the years and you'll see the, the payoff in your marriage.